waiting, waiting for a star to fall, waiting for a star to fall. Hello and welcome to the live stream. Okay, um, by the way, the other answers have come in and the uh, consensus sort of seems to be that it's not a good idea to post when I'm live streaming. Uh, so that is from the other issue we had earlier. Um, so the uh, the issue again we were discussing is uh, Jovian lunar eclipses, and the big issue we're coming up against is uh, the difference of in the view from the surface of a planet than from the center, which uh, the center is what um, what spice gives sea spice gives us. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to add um, a few things to our sea spice program. Uh, primarily, we, we're sort of interested in the angular diameter of the uh, of the uh, objects that are visible and their angular separation. And that should give us some idea of, from the center, of whether or not the objects are um, eclipsing or not, which we already know. But then we can use that to compute the, uh, the two values from the sides of the planet, that is to say the positions on the planet that are perpendicular to the direction in which the eclipse is occurring, and from the surface of the planet that is immediately in the direction towards where the eclipse is occurring. And in both cases, we're going to be referring to the the sun, because the sun is, you know, the object that's generating the uh, the light, which is the sun, uh, as being the center of the eclipse, uh, and the obscuring object is not being the center. But they're going to be very close to each other because, of course, this is an, an, an eclipse situation. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to bcobscurations.c, and we have, uh, it's very nicely, um, it's very nicely been um, generalized. I'm going to go ahead and double check that I have everything saved, which I probably do. But just in case, this is on another machine, you can't see what I'm doing. Okay. And um, and now let's see what we can do here. So all of this is basically just getting the, the uh, argument set up. Um, obscured frame, obscured stroke length. Term oh, and these are just the frames for the obscured and obscuring. I don't even know I think we need them, but whatever. Um, let's see, ellipsoid. Okay, and this is actually what the big, the work that gets done is done right here. Uh, this is the beginning. This uh, basically says, show me when there's an occultation of, um, and we're talking about any occultation at all, uh, between two ellipsoids from our observer. Now, I would like to look at this function, uh, GFOCLTC, because um, I don't think it actually returns anything uh, useful in terms of whether the eclipse is partial or complete. Um, but we might be able to use it here. So over here, we're basically converting these the times that these things happen to Unix time. So this is where we're going to do a little bit more, a little bit of extra work here. And the extra work we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out, oops, someone's apparently changed this. Okay, me have apparently changed this. So what we're going to do here is we're going to try to find out the um, a couple of things just sort of randomly print for right now, and later we'll get into more detail about what they mean and why they're important to us. So what we're going to be printing here is um, the angular diameter of each object as viewed from the observer's center, and we might add in some other stuff as well, and then also the angular separation between the two. And you'll notice there's a beginning and an end time, so there's some, some possibility for us to look at sort of the average the between the beginning and the end time, or even be more sophisticated into a goal seek, which is they call a geometric finder, to see if we can find the smallest separation or the smallest angular diameter uh, of the, you know, or the largest angular diameters of the planets of the uh, objects we're observing. So there's there's, a, there's quite a bit we can do here. We're going to start with something very simple, and uh, that is we're going to, um, let's see, I don't think there's much more to this program, yeah. And this is just, um, these are just some notes I made which we can get rid of. Do not treat observers as correct, and that is the thing we're trying to get rid of here. Okay, so what we have here is um, a time frame, and we actually could, in theory, and we probably should actually, make a subroutine here to compute the um, both the angular distance between the two objects and their uh, angular radius. We're, we're not going to right now, but we can. That's certainly something we should be doing later on. Okay, so um, let's see. Am I using BOD VRD here anywhere? 
I think I used it somewhere else. B O D V. Okay, and the, of course, in order to do all this, we'll need to know the, uh, you know, the actual radiuses and diameters and all that good stuff of the things that we're talking about. The uh, the obscuring. Uh, in fact, all three of the objects: the the uh, the sun, the thing that's obscuring the sun, and the target diam and the uh, the view the observer, basically. So what we need to do here, and there's no point in getting them each time. So we'll go ahead and get that here. Now I know we did something very similar to this recently, so I just need to find out uh, where we, um, wow, uh, I need to figure, find out where we were. In fact, let's go ahead and get out of mathematics. We don't really need it anymore. Um, so we need to f find out where we were doing this. Um, and I'm, I mean it's not, it's not this one, it's I think BC comp dis.c sounds like it would be the, the way to, the place to do it. Okay. Um, yeah, I kind of wish I commented these things better. What does this do? Um, I have no idea what this does. Uh, I think it might tell us. Oh yeah, it might tell us how much. Right. We I think we did this something else, which was how how long Mars is further from Earth than the Sun, or something like that. Something very similar to that. Um, so was it? it? Might have been just Playground C or BC Zodiac. Although I don't see that Zodiac would actually um, Zodiac would have anything to do with that. So I think it was B B O D V R D. And let's see if, if it. Um, a BC Eclipse. And I guess that's what I used earlier. And BOD VRD. Okay. And we want the radii of all three objects that we're dealing with. And we will go ahead and get that here. It doesn't cost us a lot because we're not doing it in a loop, we're just doing it once. So we will say... Okay. Okay, so we're going to say the, uh, and we're going to assign the uh, the first radii, which is the uh, highest coordinate of the triaxial ellipse, uh, as the radii. B but there are, you know, there are differences. Uh, the sun and moon happen to have, uh, are virtually real spheres, perfect spheres. And the Earth is really a triaxial ellipsoid, uh, where the, the polar and equatorial radius are different. We're going to use the equatorial radius. And in this case, we, we actually don't know what the objects are. We're going to use the equatorial radius uh, sort of throughout, which is the largest of the three uh, radiuses, radii. Um, and I think I made the brilliant decision of calling these observer, <laughs> all beginning with OB. Um, so let's see what we can do here. I forgot what dim was. I think dim is just the, tells you the number of dimensions of the array you're getting back. And so um, let's see if we, we'll go ahead and create a, uh, Spice. Wow, we have no spice doubles in this uh, code. It's kind of brilliant. Um, and we're going to say observer radius. Um, boy, I really. Okay. I probably should have not done this. Um, observer rad. Obscured rad, obscuring rad, and then we need a, we actually need a three-dimensional array to hold this data, but um, we're going to call that temp rad uh, three because we're never going to actually use all three values, but we need we temporarily need to hold them uh, before assigning them to these uh, three um, these three uh, these three variables. So we're going to do. Um, and I guess we're going to use dim as our sort of uh, pointer to a variable. I don't think dim is actually that important because we know we're going to... Oh, I guess it is important because we don't necessarily know how many values we're getting back. For radii, we know we're getting back three values, so not an issue. Um, but I suppose in theory we could get back more than three values, and that's why we have this dim parameter. Um, okay, so we have sort of scaring. Okay, So this would be um, the observer. And this will just be the temp rad. 
Did I call it temporad or temporad? Yes, I did. Okay. And then here we can just say um, observer rad equals temporad zero. And this code is going to be a little bit redundant, more so than I want it to be, but it's not that bad. And then we're going to do the same thing for the um, for the obscuring. Let's see what that is. Obscure duh. And then we're going to say obscured rad is temporad zero. Finally, for the obscuring object. Oh, yep. I will probably be cursing this decision to name these like these uh, forever. Obscuring rad. Okay, and as always, we want to uh, waste time by printing these before going any further. Um, Uh, viewer sun blocker. There, how's that? And we'll go ahead and give the radii of each three of them. I think this would will be in kilometers. Um, so this will be observer rad. The sun is going to be the obscured rad because that is the thing that's being obscured, and the blocker is going to be the obscuring rad. And I may just change all my variables across the board to be the, like this. And here we're going to exit zero as a test. And we'll say print uh, printf testing, and because we just want to get these values here. So now we, of course, have the question of whether this is even going to bother to make. And then we can say, I think, um, let's see what this does if it's. Viewer sun blocker. Oh right, right. So the viewer is the moon, apparently. Um, no, sorry. <laughs> the viewer is Io. Eight. That sounds about right. The sun, pretty big. Jupiter, about a tenth of the size of the sun. So that's all good. We have these numbers down correctly. Let me go ahead and make a quick save of that. And let's continue. Okay. So one step at a time. And I guess I will leave these prints in here because we're also printing some other stuff which might be useful, but, but it's only the first few lines so we can easily ignore it if we need to. Okay, so now what we want to do over here is when we um, have these two time frames, the beginning and the end, we, we already know the radiuses, that's not, a, that's not an issue. We do want to get the positions of these, um, of these uh, objects. So, um, and those will be floating point arrays so we're going to call those obscured uh, pause three, obscure ring pause three, and observer pause three. Which I don't think the observer pause actually it is. No, it is necessary. Um, yeah. So and then this actually uses uh, the spice's built-in occultation uh, function. And that doesn't really res that doesn't really uh, leave us with a lot. It doesn't give us a lot of extra information. Uh, but now we will going to look at this uh, occultation function. It might give us not this one particularly, but similar functions might give us uh, information that we could use as to whether it's a partial, complete, or whatever uh, type of occultation. Okay. Oh, occultation event. That's that actually might be really useful. Okay. Determine time intervals when an observer sees one target occulted by another. Report progress and handle interrupts if so commanded. The surfaces of the target bodies may be represented by triaxial ellipsoids or by topographic data provided by DSK files. That is really some good stuff there. Okay. So let's see. The input and the output here is going to be the input is going to be the type of occultation. Name of the body occulting the other, type of shape model front body, uh, type of name of body occulted, uh, uh, let's see, let's make sure we have three, two different bodies here. Uh, yeah, we have the front body, F front, F shape, F frame, back body, B shape, B frame. We don't have a target body, unfortunately. We don't have an observer body. 
uh, aberration correction flag, name of the observing body, tolerance, uh, the UD step, UD ref, uh, all this good stuff. Progress report flag. Um, and I think the only thing this does that the other one doesn't do is it, um, it basically lets you interrupt the program and lets you give progress report as you're doing it. So I don't think this is uh, very exciting, actually. Um, okay. If either the front or back target body is modeled as a point, which we don't do, but the observer is modeled as a point. And I don't think this is going to give us anything above and beyond what the, the, the um, function we're actually using is, except that it lets you do, in fact, I think that's literally the only difference here. Uh, report pro well, and you know what we can find out. Let's go ahead and do the um, find occultation and see what the difference is. Um, and you can see that really the only difference here is um, report progress and blah. And I guess in the other case, no, actually, yeah, that is that's literally the only difference. I'm trying to do like a blink tag here, but uh, like a blink uh, blink plate. But I think this is the only difference actually. So that's not very exciting. We're trying to get some more information about um, um, about occultation. So let's see if we can do that. Find occultation type. That could be very useful to us. And I just brought that out in a new window. And those are the only three occultation. So let's see what occult C does. Determine the occultation condition, not occulted, partially, etc., of one target relative to another target as seen by an observer at a given time. The surfaces of the target bodies may be represented by triaxial, or by, so this is again very similar to what we were saying before. Um, target, um, first target, first target, body of the first body. Hmm. It's a little bit different. What does target one mean here? Um, determine the occultation relative to another target is seen by an observer. I'm pretty sure we can't, again, we're going to have the problem that the observer does not get to have a, a body shape. Um, so is the string, so ellipsoid, we will always do ellipsoid. Um, and and w it'll be exa almost exactly the same as the parameters we give to GF OCLTC, so we can copy that. Um, the only thing that kind of bugs me here. Um, uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. So here's here's why here's what's why they don't give an order here. The second is partially or fully or um, and okay. So this is good. So this is a uh, total occultation of first angular occultation. Um, so partial occultation, no occultation, partial angular and target, and that's the reverse of one doing the other. So it really doesn't matter which order we give them in as long as we're consistent as to use of our sign. Um, so this is good. This is, we can use this very nicely. Um, and it really shouldn't even be that hard to use because it's almost identical uh, to, um, to the function we're using to define the occultation, the GFOC. It's almost very similar to this function here. So let's do this. And what we want here is occult C. And it doesn't really matter which one is target one. We will say, um, obscured object is going to be target. Well, let's, let's give it in the same order we gave it to GF, O, C, L, T, C. Obscuring object first, shape ellipsoid. Oh, in fact, because we could almost copy these parameters. Um, obscuring frame, okay, then obscured, wow, these are like the middle six parameters are going to be exactly the same, literally. Obscured frame, um, and then aberration correction, I think we were going to use, I think we can use XCN here as well. That's the most accurate, but it doesn't really make a huge difference. Um, Uh, let's see, none, light, perception, reception, transmission. And for us, it's really neither because the, the observer is, but we'll go ahead and do it. We'll say XCN just to, just to make things happy. And then observer, and then 
we, we need to do this for the beginning and the end both, not a huge deal. And the only thing that's coming back to us, uh, the only actual output of this, just to double check, we'll see I, 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 and there's an O at the very end. Yeah, the only, the only, um, the only return value from this is the occultation ID, which is a uh, spice, I guess it's a spice int. Um, and we'll go ahead and declare a special spice int for that. Uh, we don't need to be temporary with that. Obscured code. Do we actually use obscured code anywhere? I wonder now. Um, hmm. Oh yes, that's for the uh, determining the frame of uh, the the rotational frame for the uh, the object, which it turns out we don't even bother to use. But you know, whatever. And we'll just call this a cult ID. And if I remember correctly, we have to send this in as a um, as a uh, pointer because it's going to get set. So let's do that. Okay. Um, That was fairly pointless. Okay, I was trying to delete all this. I del deleted a little bit too much. There. Okay. Um. And I think I'm going to want three of those, actually. I'm not going to make an array out of them, but I do want three of them because I want one for the beginning, one for the end, and one for the middle. And again, I don't think this is going to be very exciting. Um. But, uh, occult ID2, occult ID3, and I kind of get the feeling that I misspelled it down there. Um, so one's going to be at the beginning, three's going to be at the end, um, and we're going to put two in the middle, just I'm sort of vaguely curious. Um, to see if the middle is going to be actually any difference, and I screwed that up. It should be 3 and 2. And then what we're going to print is... These are integers. Uh, let's be nice with our comma spaces. Um, occult ID 1, occult ID 2, occult ID 3. And to be honest, none of this gives us anything, this doesn't do anything in terms of angular radius or angular separation. Uh, so we have, uh, once again, uh, wasted some time here. And we should probably do the make in the correct directory. See what this does. Ooh, it's very interesting. Very interesting, actually. So... It looks like the okay, so we can we can write down what these mean, and they're always going to be positive because we've chosen a specific order for occultation and occulted. Um, the fact that we're getting zeros here is vaguely interesting, but not super interesting because we're at a cusp between uh, when the event is just about to begin. Um, so let's go ahead and write down what these values mean, um, and we might end up actually printing them out as you know based on what they mean, but. Um, OCLTID, and let's just copy this from, let's go, well, yeah, we'll at least to let running, but we'll minimize it. Um, just copy this over here from the output. Um... I'm going to be a little bit obnoxious here and copy the whole thing. We're going to get rid of some of the... Uh, yes, and we're also going to do it correctly. And I think if we're careful, we can actually get this all on one line without breaking anything. I'm wrong, of course, but, you know. Maybe... Oh, so close. And we've never seen even a 2, by the way. 
Oh, because those would be annular and we don't actually have that concept here. Partial. And again, two, which we won't ever have, annular occultation. And we will have it if we use like, um, that's a good question actually. Jupiter's pretty big, so I think all the eclipses it gets is uh, our um, total occultation. Um, I think all of the occultations by uh, by Jupiter will always be total or partial. They won't. We won't have annular showing up there anywhere. Okay, so this is interesting. I'm going to cheat a little bit by adding one second to the beginning and subtracting one second from the end, because I actually do want to see. Um, I actually do want to see ones. I don't want to see zeros in there because that's that's, a, that's sort of a corner case. So let's do a make. Oh, there we go, 131, one. that's actually very consistent. Um, okay, so we can see they always start off as partial, become total, and end as partial. Now, I guess what's vaguely interesting to us here is if we're looking only for total occultations, um, and if, if there is a total occultation of the entire planet, it is going to happen um, at point when it when we have point three, we're not going to necessarily be looking for any type of occultation. We do want the uh, the total um, eclipse of uh, well, actually, it's not specified. Let's leave this open for right now. But um, but as you can see, in all of these cases, there is a point where it goes into total eclipse. Uh, starts off as partial, goes into total. And let's see if we can. Uh, you know, I'm I'm almost sure we can do this for Callisto. Um, Wow. Okay, that was interesting. Ganymede. Hmm. Callisto, Ganymede, Io, and the other one, Europa. Okay, and now, of course, intelligently, we're not going to ask why there's never an eclipse on Callisto. But stupidly, we are because we are it's kind of interesting, actually. And I'm guessing it's because there's a it's way too far off the plane or something, or my program is is broken. And so our location is going to be Callisto. I did. I used to dislike the fact these were in alphabetical order because um, it's actually whoa 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 whoa. It's actually. Um, It, it would. A, I originally thought it would be actually would be nice if they were sort of like you know Jupiter and then the moons and and all that sort of being complete alphabetical order. But this is actually not too bad. So we're on Callisto now. Let's watch it slowly. Jupiter slowly approach. We you can see all the other Callisto is really far out there, huh? Um. Somewhere here is the sun. There's Capricornus, nice. Um, it's kind of cool. You can see the other three moons kind of, kind of revolve around Jupiter. Okay, here we go. And so the question is, why are we not going to see an eclipse here? It even looks like it's going to... Mm, it's not looking good. It's freeze time there. Oh, you know what? It looks like we might actually have Jupiter go past completely north of the sun. That is wild. And now let's speed things up a little bit more and see if that always happens. I guess it always happens. Yep. There are no eclipses of Callisto. Because that's actually interesting enough. I'm going to mention that as part of our uh, notes. As soon as we stop freaking time. We might even include um, an image. Of that. that might be excessive to include an image. But we definitely want to include a note there that... Uh, uh, Callisto. I could have sworn I had notes for all of this stuff. 
Callisto never eclipsed because of tilt. Um, and then I'll add, see if we, and I'm saying picture, of course it's not really a picture, it's a simulation. Uh, we might want to do that. We might want to just show that uh, Callisto, the, the, the sun always passes too far to what we would call the north of, of, uh, of the sun. Uh, Jupiter passes too far to the north of the sun when you're viewing from Callisto. Fascinating. I actually did not know that. I am, I am somewhat impressed. Um, now, one question someone had asked before, and we're not going to go too deeply into it, is if you are on Io, will you ever see Ganymede, this might be going the wrong direction actually, ever see Ganymede eclipse um, the sun? And the apparently the answer is no, but I think it's actually going to be the other way because I think Io is closer. So it wouldn't work that way. Ganymede, now, and we can do this for all combinations of Jupiter's moons, uh, and apparently not. So that never happens. Uh, you know, maybe do combinate. So I'll put this in here also. Maybe do combos for all four moons. See if we ever get uh, get all four of them eclipsing each other. So this is actually pretty good stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and save it to Git. Okay. Um. Okay. So yeah, this doesn't really, this just sort of tells tell us what we already knew, actually. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look to see what is the, um, we can compute the, uh, if we know the positions of all three objects, which I guess we, we kind of don't, but, um, I mean, we can find them using, it's not hard to find them at all, but, um, I, I guess I was sort of hoping, I guess the uh, GFOCLTC, uh, subroutine doesn't really give us anything back except whether or not they're uh, except w that they are in the process of occulting each other so um, not hard not difficult we just means we have to get the positions ourselves here um, and I'm going to use a function that I wrote earlier because I really like it not because it's the correct thing to do um, and I'm almost sure it's a void position x y oh that's actually um, that's like a literal null wrapper around uh, a spike easy PC, Earth vector, which is the vector from Earth, which we don't care about right now. Um, GFQ, GFTRX. Oh, okay. These are these are uh, sub subroutines that define sub subroutines. That is valid in uh, the C compiler. And that means if I ever want to use very quickly, say I want to measure this or that, I can use the the the, the calling function inside it, which I guess is uh, oh BC between, um, which tells me whether so. What this does is when at least one part of target is a given sky elevation, radius <laughs> otherwise not useful um, between. And to do this, I actually have to define subroutines that are based on parameters passed to the function. But that is perfectly acceptable in in C. Um, compare double. Okay. Shouldn't compare double. Uh, these are the equi uh, the equatorial to ecliptic, azimuth altitude, not is decreasing, not interesting. Elevation function, not interesting. Umbral data, which I think we just wrote, which means that my um, hmm. I believe I had something that returned like a 13 element array that give it you all sorts of information about the function. All sorts of information about an object. But let's take a quick look here. Name the carrot planets, planet to string. Um, and that's not interesting. This is an interesting little miles, kilometers, kilometers, miles. Year to ET very roughly converts. Um, debug. Oh, I do have a debug function. Hmm. And it and it, it, dis it decides whether to print something. Um, Oh, it actually just tells you whether you're in debug mode if the um, debug environment string is set to 1. That's kind of interesting. I don't know if I ever use it, but interesting nonetheless. Um, R to D. Oh, and this is actually, turns out that they already have a function. I accidentally double wrote it. Earth vector, earth angle, earth max angle, sun minimum angle. And these are all basically when I was looking to see planetary positions and all this stuff is important. Sky elevation, BC rise and set, which tells you when something rises and sets. These are all very Earth-based functions. 
you see between when something is between two uh, two uh, elevations. Signum that tells you whether something is positive or negative. Ecliptic to these just does this. Here it is, geom info. And I guess the reason I didn't realize it was this is because it um, it gives you back a spice double. Okay, so this is a wrapper around that it returns the XYZ and spherical coordinates, their derivatives, and whether these derivatives are positive or negative. Um, so it basically returns every possible thing you could want from this. And the only problem I see here is why does this return a spice double? We'll, f we'll see if that's relevant here. Um, okay, so one thing you can pass this thing is a, um, oh good, I don't have any of the variables uh, documented, is a reference frame. And I think um, eclipse date true is not a real reference frame. It's one that you have to create by changing the equatorial coordinates to ecliptic coordinates if you're doing it in the, you know, in the tr correct true date time, not at J2000. Okay, so there's this um, result. So results is the thing that is being sent in. Um, oh, I return the uh, results array as an array of 12 elements. Uh, a nine, ooh, holy crap, 20 elements. That is awesome. Um, uh, now I'm beginning to wonder if I can give a rat's ass about this. Um, and I've decided I do not. In fact, it's going to be a lot easier uh, to look at the two objects from the um, from the observer and determine uh, determine what the angular separation is. So yeah, I think this is excessive, so we're not going to use it. Okay, that was a good waste of time there. All right, so now we can say, um, I think we can use uh, easy reader or easier reader. We'll show you what that is in just a sec. Um, yeah, let's, I'm tempted to see if I'm already using it somewhere so I can get get a sort of a copy instead of having to even, even look at the documentation, but that might be a little bit excessive. Easier reader, there it is, it's kernel easier reader. Um, I think that'll give it to you from a given... Yeah, there it will. Okay. Uh, SPK easier. State position and velocity of a target body relative to optional... Okay, awesome. That's exactly what we need. Um, okay, so the really, again, the only thing we really need to uh, sort of worry about here is we need to have vectors to hold this data. And they need to be six um, element vectors because we are... Uh, looking at uh, both, uh, we, we're not using the velocity, but we're given the, we will get the velocity, so we need to, we need to be able to hold it. Um, wow, I probably shouldn't have done that, okay. Alright, so what we need here is a spice double is the obscured position, wait, do I use these? I do not. Uh, and we don't need the observer position because we're using the observer as the as the center target of what we're observing from. So we already have this for obscured position, obscuring position. And I'm just wondering if there's something I'm I'm doing wrong here. Um, I don't think so. We could, in theory, have three of these variables: one for um, the first time frame, and I guess we're going to do that, yeah. Let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, just like we do for occult ID, we could have, hmm, do I care? Um, let's not do that right now, but we, at some point we may want to, uh, and actually because these are uh, position and velocity vectors, we need six elements, not three. Okay, so let's get in here, and let's go ahead and look at the uh, the positions. Um, the target will be, let's start with the obscure ring, that, which is going to be the closer body. Uh, ET, which is going to start off at beg for this one. Uh, the reference frame, which I think is going to just be the obscuring frame. Doesn't really matter though. Um, actually, it might, because it's an ellipsoid. The aberration correction, which I think we've decided is always going to be XCN, but let me double check. 
And, oh, thanks for the people who are watching. Hello there, people watching. I won't mention you unless you wish to be mentioned. If you do wish to be mentioned, please speak up now. Or, you know, type out something now. Okay. Um, let's go here, and I'm almost sure this is going to be XCN as it always is. Uh, oh, no. Okay, hang on, hang on. Um, okay, hang on, hang on. State of the target body... Uh, okay, sorry. In this case, we actually want CN plus S because we are, we are the observing body, not the not the target body. I think none of this actually really matters because the the difference the differences are so small, uh, especially for like Jupiter and Io. It's not going to be a big deal, but we just need to put something in here. The observer is going to be our observer, um, and here's where we're going to say that's the, that's the that's the array and I think do we have an LT defined just because we we never actually look at it but but we do need to have an LT uh, because it is uh, because the light travel time is returned to us whether we want to use it or not um, and you know that might actually help us determine whether to use it or not but we don't really care because it's it's going to be very small for what we're doing at least I hope it is. Okay, so this will give us the position of the obscuring frame um, of the obscuring object, and then of course we want the um, obscured object. And the obscured position. And of course what we actually want is the... Um, oh, I don't want to declare a variable inside of here. Uh, so we will need three, well, we want the angle between the two. And for that, we actually probably do want three different variables for beginning, end, and, and very end. Um, beginning, middle, and end. Angle two, angle three. Okay, and then that one's just vector angle, I think. So we will do, um, student frame, obscure position, and then ang one. And we're going to say beginning plus one, just because we're to be consistent. We're using one second after the obscuration begins. Uh, angle one equals. I'm almost sure it's vector angle, but unfortunately, I will need to check that. Hang on one sec. I'm, I'm almost sure that's correct. No. Wow. Max angle. Blah, 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 blah. Now, come on, there's got to be a vector in here somewhere. Wow. Okay. Is it vecing? Am I just being silly? Wow. Let me try ang C. Wow. I really have no memory whatsoever. Um, those are state transformation vectors. Axis and angle, time derivative of... Euler angles to matrix M, no. Illumination, phase angle search, illumination angles. Uh, illumination angles, no, 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 no. Very simple, we just need the freaking angle between two vectors. Wow. Okay. Vector, I know there is a function for this, and I know they have one, not, and I didn't just create it. Derivative, 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 derivative. Ellipse to center in generating vectors. That's a search for the vector. Subpoint vector coordinate search. No, we're not doing a search. Matrix transpose, matrix transpose. Normal vector and constant to plane. Normal vector and point to plane. plane to <laughs> Boy, there's a lot of vector functions here. Um, transform a vector. Map surface to outward two vectors. Okay, unit vector norm, vector addition, vector cross product distance, vector dot product, which will give us the vector angle, um, vector equality, vector equality, uh, v hat vector linear combination, 
linear combination, vector norm, vector norm, perpendicular, vector projection, vector projection, vector projection. <laughs> Come on! Separation! Okay, hang on, that's what I want. Angular separation of vectors, that's v sep c is what I want. So I, I know I've used it before, so we'll just look for it real quick. Look here. And that, I'm yeah, vsepc is nice in that it just returns a double. I'm almost sure it does not try to, yeah, it does return doubles. It's very nice. Okay. This will be in radians, of course. Uh, vsepc of, uh, let's see, obscuring, po and it doesn't matter which order these are in. Obscured pause. Okay. And. Hmm. Yeah, let's go ahead and go crazy and do all three of these, shall we? And by the way, if you're wondering, you know, could this be in an array or whatever? Yes, it probably could be. Okay. Um, so here we're going to say beginning plus end over two the middle of the occultation, which is not necessarily the maximum, by the way, because things move around a lot, and although for short occultations, it probably is pretty darn close. And here we're going to say angle 2, because we've redefined these vectors, is going to be this. Here it's going to be n minus 1, n minus 1, and ang 3. And let's see if we can and we might want to start putting in, um, yeah, we're good. Doesn't look we start wanting to label some of these things, but at the moment we're not even sure which ones we're using, so we're okay here. Angle 3. Okay. Once again, we go into here. And into here. I don't know if that actually worked, but let's see. Ah, uh, yes. We we said, uh, well, I forgot what the order was, but we can quickly find out. Observer is Io. Sun being obscured by Jupiter for this period of time. And my phone wants me to pay some attention to it, so I will very briefly do that and see what it wants. It wants uh, nothing, which is good, because that's what I'm going to give it. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Uh, not exactly what we expected, actually. In fact, very different from what we expected. Um, to the point, I think we made a mistake somewhere. Uh, so we want to know from the observer what the angle... Oh, you know what? These... Um, yes. Um, yeah, these numbers do not look anything like I expected them to be. So I'm unhappy with them. Uh, even in radians, these numbers are ridiculous. Oh, but actually, Jupiter's angular diameter is huge, so this might actually be all okay. Uh, the fact that the increase, though, is kind of worrisome also. All right, so let's go ahead and go back over here. And um, and I do print them in ang1, ang2, ang3 order. So this is at the middle, beginning, middle, and end, essentially. Um, and let's go ahead and multiply. These are um, these are in radians. So if we say degrees per radian, which is DPRC, um, oh, I hope that's correct. Hang on. Uh, it, there's a very simple way to convert from degrees to radians. I think DPRC is just yeah degrees per radian. That's the constant. So we degrees per radian divides by radian multiplies by degree. We have degrees. So we'll just do this. This won't of course change anything except give us results that are more uh, weird. I don't know. Okay. So give us results that are in degrees, which is maybe easier for us to read. Although again, not really a huge deal. Da -da -da -da. Okay. So what's interesting here is. The Sun and Jupiter are only 8 degrees apart when... And I guess the reason this could be correct is because um, the center... We're talking about the two centers of, of the objects. Although this seems really suspicious to me. This seems even more suspicious. Uh, that we go to 127 degrees. Um, 
in of separation and uh, yeah these numbers seem kind of crazy to me 162 degrees of separation even for Jupiter is a bit much so I think I made a mistake somewhere in the code here so let's have a quick look all right so we have the position of the obscuring object um, obscuring pause obscured pause uh, as from observer I don't really want to print these out but I might have to um, Hmm. Am I supposed to be changing something else here? I don't. And I should be able to reuse these uh, these uh, these vectors. Um. But clearly something has gone wrong. Something is not right. Something is quite wrong. Uh, I wish I could sing a song, but copyright issues, and I'm not a French nun. All right, so we're going to have to do some debugging here. And because these are uh, six-dimensional vectors, we only want, we only care about the positions. So we're going to do this, and we want let's see, obscuring. Po it doesn't really matter which one, as long as we're consistent here. Um, oh. Okay. One problem here is I'm sending to VSEBC. Um, two vectors that are actually have six dimensions instead of two vectors that have three dimensions. Now, let's take a look to see if there's another problem, but I, and I'm kind of cheating here because really it's, you know, I, it's going to use the first three floats, but I mean, again, we're not really supposed to be sending it six-dimensional vectors, but, uh, but let's see if that is an issue here. Let's see if that is the issue here, because it might be. Obscured pose position. Obscured position 1 and obscured position 2. And I think that might be why I wrote the vector angle function myself because uh, my version probably takes exactly three elements instead of, um, uh, sorry, it could take six elements and tucks out the three or something. I don't actually know. I'm, I'm kind of unhappy right now, so let's take a look at this real quick. Um, and I guess we could just send it vector, you know, we could just create a vector from uh, an array from these three elements. It's, it's doable in C. Uh, it's very strange, though. You usually don't, you don't do it that way. But, you know what? Who knows? Maybe this is the problem. Do this. Blah, blah, blah. Of course, we don't even know if that actually worked, but we will because we'll get... Ooh. Something did not compile correctly. Let's see what went wrong. And what are we looking at? Obscurations? Let's see. P oh! Argument 4 from incompatible pointer type. That shouldn't really... Oh, double ouch. Constant spice. Okay, not good at all. That that's really not the problem, but I mean, you know. And let's see what what are we trying dim to be? Spice double no spice it's gonna be a spice it. Um so let's go ahead and clean up these other errors that have nothing to do with this error. Um so instead of using BOD VRD which expects uh which expects integers, uh I we should use the function that expects strings for consistency. And I think that's going to be right next to BRD. Uh, VCD, is it? Yeah, I'm sure VCD for character. Uh, don't careful, careful. And BOD VRD is for... Okay, that should be fine then. Um, unless I do a conversion here. Um... Oh, oh, those are, those are, um, no, those are characters. Observer. And, uh, well. Huh. 
That's interesting. Let's see what that... Let's go ahead and recompile that and see what happens here. There's apparently another mistake I'm not seeing. Obscure pills undeclared. Yeah, that's not good at all. Um... Oh, that's just because I want to say obscure duh pose instead of obscure pose. Yep. And then I need to fix that here. And probably here too. Try that again. Probably should have done less on that. Oh, cool. I think it worked. Dun 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 dun. Okay, here we go. Um, angle one, angle two. Yeah, it would be really nice if I knew how to do this, um, so I guess I could use my own vector angle function on these, but let's see, um, Okay, so I'm a little bit confused here as to what's going on. Um, I just It just doesn't seem realistic that uh, these angles are correct at all. So uh, let, me, let me make sure I'm running this correctly. It is um, the observer is Io, the obscured object is the sun, Jupiter is doing the obscuring, and I'm looking in, the, roughly speaking, the year 2018. Um, So not good. But let me see if we can use my own vector angle function. If not, we can use the dot product and the norm. Although again, we're using kind of using um, six element vectors, uh, and we are only using three of them, three of their their coordinates. So let's see if we have a. Maybe that's the reason I created vector angle. Oh, I didn't create vector angle. Earth vector, earth angle, earth max angle, sun min angle sky elevation um okay okay so i guess passing it i mean it's not really a good idea to pass it uh to pass it three three elements. Um, okay. I'm wondering if you can pass pure arrays. I'm not ninety percent sure you can't do that, but let's see. Um, I'm going to try passing pure arrays here uh, into VSEP. And if I remember correctly, the way you declare a pure array, and I don't remember correctly, uh, there is a way to pass a pure array into C. I think it is, bra it is like brace. And I really don't know if this is going to work very worried that it won't. Obscure position zero, obscure position... I think what I was going to complain about is this is not a pointer to an array, it is an actual array. Um, but if this works, it'll, it, it, it'll be very easy. Uh, we don't even have to declare a temporary variable there. So let's see what this does. Oh! That's not cool. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't like it for two reasons. Okay. Um... So... Well, we could force the issue by going back up here. 
and saying instead of saying um, this is hideous by the way temp1 and temp2 which we're just going to use as you might, might imagine um, I think I can get away with this almost sure I can get away with that And then we can do what's you know, we can do the necessary and do this. This is hideous. In fact, this is hideous enough that I might write a subroutine to to work around it. All right, let's see if that makes it any happier. Expected expression before token. Do I mean to say temp one three equals? This is one of the things I love about the C language is it sucks. Um, am I messing up Java? Is it? Is this really just um, that? That seems wrong somehow. Because right, that that looks more like Perl. But let's see what that does. Maybe that's the way to do it. Unexpected. Okay. So when all else fails, and I know I've done this before, so it's going to drive me nuts when I see that it's something. V oh, is it just parentheses? Um. No, it is. It is by. Um, oh, I wonder if you can only do that during declaration. And not when you're, um, and oh, not not actually assigning it. I think that's the problem. Um, okay. <laughs> um, this almost begs for a loop that I'm not going to give it right now because again, uh, we're just experimenting. So here we just set temp one equal to. This is we're deep copying an array the really hard way. And temp two, zero is going to be this. And to be honest, all of this is just because I'm not, I'm too lazy to check to see whether the uh, the vector angle function in VSEP is working correctly with the six element vectors. And then finally, did I get rid of it by mistake? Yeah, there it is. All right, so this should at least compile. Um, yeah, BC observations did compile. I don't know why I did that again. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Um, ang1. Um, still 8 degrees, that didn't change. 68 degrees here, 143 degrees here. Um, so no real benefit there. Uh, kind of a bummer. Okay. I guess we're going to have to at some point just see what the hell's going on here. Um, boy, this looks really good though. I mean, obscuring, obscured, C plus S, observer. I mean, that just looks brilliant, and it just doesn't work, does it? Um, then I don't, don't see why it's not working. Okay. And I guess if we wanted to, we could look at these, um, the obscuring position and the obscured position in, uh, in spherical angles, um, just to, you know, just to get an idea of what's going on. And that would probably be in the J2000 frame. 
I'm guessing. Um, no, I guess it would be in the IAU IO frame because that's that's the frame we're using for the observer. Um, the observer does have a frame, right? Um, okay, hang on. That's interesting. I thought the observer had a frame. Let's take a quick look to see if maybe that's what I'm missing. Um, oh, I might just need EZP. That might be a lot easier than trying to get... Yes, because I don't want to get the vector, I don't want to get the uh, velocity information. Alright, so that will be um, reference frame of the... Oh! This is actually a lot nicer. Um, so why the hell did I get fooled by the other one? Because it said easier, that's why. Um, an easy reader, which also is an electric company character, by the way. Um, target observer reference frame of output state vector. Observing body state of target. What is state of target? I'm kind of curious now. Um, oh, the position of the... Okay, so I've been led astray. We should have used S-P-K-E-Z-P. Let's go ahead and do that now. Um, that gets... I'm going to go ahead and save this to get just as a as sort of a mistake, just in case we ever need it again. And I am actually going to mention in this, uh, in this save that it's not working well. Okay. Um... Let's take a quick break here for me, not for you. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the chat. Uh, this will take like a minute. Okay, welcome back to the stream. Hopefully that didn't break anything. I'm gonna actually listen to myself. This might cause an echo. That didn't break anything. Okay, it didn't. Um... Okay, so now uh, let's go ahead and use this uh, EZP instead of what we were using. Okay... And, of course, we should also reduce our six-dimensional arrays to three-dimensional. I don't think that actually will matter, but, but it's not a bad idea. Easy P. And that should get rid of all the necessity for... Um, I feel unbalanced. Anyway, back. Um, so we should just be able to now say... Angle 1 equals the separation between the obscuring position, again, it doesn't matter which the order is, and the obscured pause. Um, and while we're at it, I think... I 
think we can do this for all three of these without having to get too silly. So. Okay, and this is the hardest one. This is beginning plus end over two. Right in the middle of the... And that's just as a test. It's not the maximum necessarily or anything. That's just kind of to see when it's, you know, totally quote-unquote obscure what's going on there. Alrighty. And then... We can do that for vector 3, angle 3 rather, and that's n minus 1. And honestly, it could be n here. The, the difference is not going to make a huge, it's not going to be a huge difference. All right, let's see if we get all that working, and we probably don't need that printed out either. So this maybe is the, uh, is the, is the thing that I needed to fix. And I, but you know what, I don't think it actually is. Just, just, just so you know, uh, passing argument 1 makes... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, integer from pointer. And that is because, of course, obscuring, obscured... Oh, that is that is not good at all. All right. Let's, and that might have been another problem that we had there. But let's go ahead and see. Um, easy position. So the question is, is there a version of this um, that does not use integers? It uses... Um, that uses strings, uh, spice char stars, or strings instead of integers. Um, oh, and I guess I guess technically that this is wrong for other reasons too, because the signature of this function is quite different. So let's go ahead and get that fixed up as well. We might actually have an issue here, though. With um, I'm gonna put this over here temporarily. We might have an issue here with because we need an integer here instead of a star instead of a uh, instead of a string. And everything we've been doing so far has been using strings. So um, we have to be consistent here somehow. And I'm just wondering if one of these functions here uh, will take a string instead of a um, instead of a um, instead of an integer. So let's take a look here. Okay. So this one does take uh, a string. The occultation also takes a string. This is this is like it's there's something slightly wrong with what they're doing here. Um, they're taking strings in some cases and integers in some cases. Um, oh man. Um, Well, someone actually asked for an example. Boy, they're going to be surprised when they hear this and all the crap that I say on some of the other answers. <laughs> um, oh, dear, I'm in trouble. All right. Um, constant position observer state. What does that mean? Specify it relative to where the observer has constant position. Um, name... Okay, I don't think this is what we want. Yeah, no, this is not what we want. Uh, we do want um, easy reader, spice kernel, easy reader, easy position. Well, we, we want easy position, but we want it with frickin' um, we want it with frickin' spice star character stuff. Um, inertial position, no. Character position. I'm pretty sure we don't want that. Two position and velocity. Not character position. Character position reverse. Ordinal position position. No, none of this is going to be um, position transformation matrix. Apparent position only. Hang on, that might be actually useful. And of course, the real thing we need is a way to convert from. Uh, Position of a target. Uh, whoa. How is this different from the other one? Um. Oh, because this requires an input vector instead of an input uh, input position. Okay, so we need a NAFE ID converter here, uh, and there should be one that exists. It might even be part of the BOD VRD. Uh, set of uh, set of functions. All right, so 
Problem one is we need an integer here as our target and as our observer, by the way. Uh, this is fine. The reference frame is probably fine. The correction is probably fine. Um, wait, that can't be right. Sorry, that's the wrong function. We want EZP here. Um, well that's easy that I quoted, isn't it? I want EZP. I think it's this one. Yeah. Um, and let me make sure this is the right one. Yeah. So we have multiple issues here. I'm not happy. Okay, so we need the spice, the, the target's integer, the, um, the time. The reference frame here, there's only one, um, and it's going to be, I'm going to say J, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to say J2000 because it might help us look at, like, right ascension and just declination or whatever. Uh, the aberration correction, the observer, the obscuring position, and the light travel time. So that is, that is, uh, that should be... Yeah, because these are slightly different, but, um, yeah, so this, th these are what we need. The only problem here we're having here is, um, our obscuring and obscured objects are in spice character form, and they should be in, in NAFE ID form. And there should be a really easy way to convert between the two. Um, <sighs> yeah, and the fact that the naif and the word naif ID doesn't appear anywhere here. Oh, you know what? It might be under, uh, like we said, BOD return values, return double precision values, return. Um, Oh, body named ID code translation. It's one of these. Translate the uh, name of body or object to the corresponding spice integer ID, the NAFE ID. And one of them, okay. And why are these different? Okay. <laughs> Body name, and uh, then whether or not it was able to do it. Um, okay, so why are these two things different? I maybe don't care, but let's take a quick look to see if we can figure this out. Um, Ah, here we are. Here it tells us the difference. Body names and their corresponding, which are used in Spice files. Slightly more general uh, strings containing ID codes in string format, uh, using a string even when no name is associated. So we could put integer-like strings. Um, is the general version either the name or a string representation? Oh, that one could do what? Or the code. Okay. Oh, I see. That one just returns what you sent it in if you didn't really, if you didn't really give it anything. Uh, Bob Def assigns one, which we don't want to be doing. Um, and the f refers the other angles referring what the hell? Okay, so I guess we're going to use the most general routine. Uh, this one, Bob C to S. All right. Um, and I'm sure the length, oh, maximum length of output name. Okay, so we will just have a, um, let's see, code, that's, oh, oh no, this is going the other way. Uh, this translates a, uh, uh, ID code to a string. We want to, of course, translate the string, 
to the ID code. A body string to code, yeah. Body name to code. Body, and that's to define one to the other, which we don't want. So, bod S2C is a support for strings containing ID codes to identify even when no name is associated. Identify a body using string. Not really sure what the hell is going on here, but uh, I think this is what we need. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, and add some inter observed code, obscuring code. Okay, I need to remember what I did for that. Oh, I think that's for the occultations. Mm. Oh, right, that's to get the frames for out of these. Um, the obscured and obscuring frames, the frames associated with these values. And for some reason it doesn't work with numbers, which is kind of annoying, but we'll, we'll deal with that. All right, and so what we need now here is um, obscured ID, obscuring ID, and of course, observer ID. And we'll get these pretty close to where we get the bod stuff. Um, Let's go ahead and call this function with, um, and I guess the s we need to send in the spice boolean found. We're not going to we're going to assume that it's, oh, apparently we can do that. Um, obscured found, obscure ring found. Uh, I guess we'll throw in an observer found, although we're only going to use that one once because we don't really care about the observers frame of reference. Maybe we should, but but we don't use it anywhere. Okay, so we're reusing that variable here. All right, so what we're going to say here is, da, 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 I'll just quit this once and we'll cut and paste. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, bod to sd The name is observer. Um, this will be the observer ID and observer found, even though we probably don't care about that. Okay, and then we'll just do the same thing for the other two. Except it's going to be obscured, obscured ID, and whether or not we find it. And we're not testing, the error condition here, which we really should be testing for, is that we don't find the observer name, uh, the, obs uh, the name of one of these items, and the ID of one of these items, in which case we just say we can't really proceed without that information. Um, and I'm not even bothered to put a to-do item for that because it, it'll become obvious if that happens. We'll just end up with garbage results. I mean, it probably will crash the program. We'll get a segmentation fault or something. Okay, now not obscuring, obscuring. Okay. Um... And I guess, oh, these are radii. Um, yeah, we won't bother to print the NAFE IDs, although, oh, we could print like all three of them, the frame, uh, the radius. Well, you know what, let's do that. Um, observer first, I guess, I don't know why. Uh, and that'll be, um, R equals percent F, that's the radius. Frame equals percent, <laughs> where are we finding the frames of these things? Oh, here, okay. And that's gonna be the, uh, the observer. Yeah, we're not going to have an observer frame. So for the observer, there is no observer frame. But there will be for the other, so we'll leave that here. Radius equals this, and the NAFE ID equals this. And that will be observer um, rad and observer ID.
the obscuring object. So that would be obscuring red, obscuring ID. And then um, frame equals percent s, and that will be the. And that part of this is because I actually want to see why they're messing up my frames uh, like this. This would be the obscuring frame. Okay. And this is finally the obscure. Duh, the thing that's being obscured, the sun. Uh, F name equals percent S. That would be the obscured's radius, the obscured's ID, and the obscured frame. And that should do that. And I'm just curious to see if this even even gives us that information here. And let's do a see if uh, complains here makes pointer from it. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, we actually that's not good at all. So that those need to be passed as reference uh, parameters. And I think observer found actually needs to be passed as a reference parameter also. because they are being set by the target routine. Gotta love C. Gotta love C. Because you have to. Um, makes integer from point... Okay, yeah, and that one we actually are uh, on top of. That is the thing we need to fix. Um, SPK, easy P. Uh, obscuring ID. Obscured ID. How did I just delete? Oh, I deleted the signature, which we don't really need. Obscuring ID, obscured ID, obscuring ID, and obscured ID. So hopefully that will fix all of these problems. And it won't, but I mean, I'd like to say hoping it will. Uh, BC in function main passing argument is makes integer from pointer. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Observer is also going to be observer ID. So let's go to over here. Hopefully I can do a... Nope, nope, that's what I wanted. Observer to observer ID. Yes, 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 yes. That should be it. Okay, one more time. Unused variable temp2 and use variable temp1. Those are warnings. They do not affect the pro they do not affect whether or not the program runs or not. All right. Rock and roll. Okay, params obscured obscuring obscuring Oh, I think because I'm now repeating some of the stuff that I did before, I think we can uh, f name is a frame. All right. I think we can fix that here. We we don't need to print it out three times. Params. Oh, that we probably do need to print out. That's um, that's the input to the program. Uh, but here I think we don't need to print the frames because we're going to print them later on. And here we should just say frame equals. Mm, I guess we put frame equals not applicable to the other one. Uh, let's do this. And those are just warnings. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Snap, snap, Adam's family. All right, the observer has a radius of that, an ID of that. Obscure has 599 IAU Jupiter, IAU Sun. Um, okay, and now the angles have changed for some reason. Uh, to, but they're still really bad. Um, the starting angle is almost always exactly 9 degrees, which worries me. And the fact that by the time we get to the end of this, the degrees are 127 is, is not good at all. So let's see what's going on here. Um, finding the occultation object, the ellipsoid. So these are the states of the, the, of the eclipse, which is fine. And they're coming out correctly, it appears. 
So we've got uh, obscured, obscuring um, in the J2000 frame, which really doesn't matter. Um, observer, obscuring pause, obscured pause. Hmm. Then at big beg plus n plus two over two, and then at n minus one. And we assign the various angles to them and convert them to degrees. So, is it time to go back to our friend Stellarium? And the answer is always yes to that question. Still dreading providing an example to the uh, Stack Exchange people. Thought I could slip that one under the rug, but apparently not. Okay. So now I guess the one we to look at here is this one, because it seems like it's saying uh, we get like an insane amount of... Uh, you know, an insane number of changes from nine degrees at the start to 172 in the middle. W basically, this is impo These are these. This should be impossible. Um, fortunately, I think we're right on I/O right now, so I don't think it should be a big deal. Um, so Friday, January 5th, between 2:14 and 4:24. Friday, January the 5th. We are way off in terms of time now. Uh, five. Zero, 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 return. I need to stop the clock here. And we are on the wrong, we are on the wrong moon. Don't you hate when that happens? Okay, IO. Middle of IO, which as we decided is not completely representative, but it's close enough. And we can find either the sun or, um, Or Jupiter. I guess we could find the sun and just watch Jupiter come in. And we are looking for January the 5th here. Are we on January 5th? Yes, we are. And we are expecting to come in at around 2.14 uh, a.m. Greenwich time. So let's, let's watch that now. Now, let's watch. Okay, coming in, coming in. Looks like Jupiter's coming in right on time here. And we will go ahead and and um, it's actually not. It is actually fairly fairly far away here. I don't, it's more than nine degrees. Like, well, it's hard to tell where the center of this planet is. It's like right there. And as we come in, certainly, um, I, I would believe more than nine degrees at this point. Okay. So now. I'm going to go all the way up to 424. I know what I'm doing. Um, I think we're on this line, right? Yeah. Um, and we're going to say it's 157 degrees away. That just does not sound right at all. It by 424. So let's go ahead and ramp up Mr. Clock. Again. And the timing is, is really good, but I mean, the dis th this angular distance here is nowhere near 157 degrees. Um, so the, uh, the question we we're going to ask is, um, uh, WTF, what the fuck's going on? Okay, and we can, we, can, we can do some debugging here. Okay, so the nature of the debugging here is going to be angle one, angle two, da 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 um, And I guess what we want to really see here is the uh, spherical coordinates of the two um, of the two things that we're looking at, Jupiter and the Sun. And I'm pretty sure there is should be. I like the way I said pretty sure, and then should be um, a, a function to convert from. Um, is this still relevant? It is not. Is this still relevant? I'm going to pretend that it is. Uh, there should be a function that converts from spherical to. Um, uh, to rectangular, and, and in fact, we're going to find it, and, and backwards. Um, derivative, latitudinal to spherical, which is, I think the only reason that's issue is because it's an we're looking at ellipses, not at, at spheres. Rectangular to spherical coordinates, that should be the one. And, yep, 
Oh, and they actually use what's called the co-latitude because they're stupid. Uh, we want that's we want actually pi minus two of that, which is the actual latitude. Um, but that's not a huge deal. So we need to have a uh, an array to hold this, of course, um, and we'll call that the SPH array. And we're going to again, um, because we're just testing, we're not going to we're not going to do three different arrays. We're just going to use one array here called SPH. It sounds a lot like SPF, but it's not. Okay, so now we have here, blah, 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 not here. Uh, we are computing the uh, first position here, angle one, and here we can say, oh boy, I'm gonna have to use <laughs> I'm gonna have to use it really tightly. Um, so actually, let me go ahead and make two of them, SPH one and two. We'll have to, they're like temporary variables essentially. In fact, I'm tempted to use temp one and temp two, which I'm not using right now. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so I can fix I can fix the warning that I'm not using them by using them, and I can actually use them um, in a way that's actually useful. So here we're going to say, um, and again, the signature of the function is this sucker. Um, okay, and I'm going to say rec spherical to C. Uh, the thing we're converting to a uh, rectangular uh, from rectangular. The first one's going to be obscuring pause, the position of the obscuring, and we're going to take in as our, um, oh, shiny. We actually need three separate uh, parameters, not an array of three. So that's, that's going to be kind of stupid here. Let's go ahead and see if we can. So we're going to need R1, R2, colat1, colat2, and I think it's just, they call it Lung, LNG. What's, what's the other name? Um, LON. So then I'm gonna use LON here. We might as well use that. LON1, LON2. So I'm going back here. Um, R1, colat1, lon1, and because they're being set, we need address of, address of, address of. And then we need the same thing for obscure or position, obscured position, which is going to be um, the sun, and it's going to be R2, colat2, lon2, and then of course we're just going to print them out. And then we're just going to do this for the beginning position at first because uh, we're we're gonna see from there how okay so obscured obscure ring and it's gonna be uh, obscured it's gonna be I got these backwards obscured obscuring just I uh, obviously I could flip around the variables but R1 colat1 times degrees per radian. Now I'm beginning to wonder if that's the correct function. DPR. Um, I think that is, yeah. That should be correct. And I am using that. DPR, DPR, DPR. Yeah, that should be correct. Um, radians per degree would convert degrees to radians. This should convert uh, degrees per radian, should convert to degrees. Although now I'm beginning to doubt myself. Um, And now I'm going to wonder if that's the actual problem, is that I am... Nah, but it can't be, because um, otherwise we'd be between 0 and 2 pi or something. So I think I think we're fine there. Uh, colat and ln1 times dprc. And r2, colat2 times dprc, colat, colat ln2 times dprc. Okay. So what that does for us. Da, 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 da. Oh wow, no errors. That's kind of nice. Um, okay. 
Um, and I think the, uh, ex the the one we're we're focusing on is um, this one right here, um, and this is being printed above this. So uh, the distance is you know, reasonable for the sun here, reasonable for Jupiterish, uh, and even these two uh, coordinates aren't too bad. So at the beginning, um, seventy-seven twenty-six, and let's go let's go back to the beginning of this. Uh, I'm going to back up time here a little bit. I like the way the stars sort of come out more more brilliantly when they're... Uh okay, and we're going to hold it forward. Whoa, too far. Okay. Um... Interesting that these two numbers are so different, but we have here that Jupiter is at the right ascension, and which is the J2000 coordinate system, um, about 12 degrees above the uh, the ecliptic plane, and that is none of these numbers are look anything remotely like that. Um, so I honestly don't know if that should or shouldn't be of concern to us here. Um, 76 and then 77 so that should be the right ascension which should is equal to about four hours and something which I think is actually what it said nope not even close um, interestingly though if you look at of date you know we're still not really getting it 26 and 36 is what we're expecting for the um, oh wait 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 one of these is the colat, isn't it? It's uh, not the latitude, it's the colat. And I think this is the colat, so the latitude would be like 12, and the latitude here would be like you know, about 12 also. And that is actually pretty close to where it is. And then the uh, the uh, longitude, uh, that we would expect to be at 18-ish degrees, uh, which I don't think we're getting. Um, yeah, 26 and 36, that's actually not too bad though. Um, no, I'm sorry. Two hours would be 30 degrees. So yeah, this is actually pretty good. Um, so let me m fix this from being co-latitude to being latitude because that is really, really, well, it's wrong, basically. Uh, it's an engineer thing that engineers do, and, and engineers are, well, stupid. Let's face it. Okay, so we're going to do 90 minus this. And again, this is a very trivial change. I really could have just done it in my head, but I'm not going to. And that will fine. Okay. And this time I'm going to be a little bit more clever here and not only do this, I'm going to actually... Um, wait, that can't be right. I'm going to grep for the... Um, uh, this number here. Um, so we just see the one that we're interested in for right now. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, and so, yeah, that wasn't tremendously clever of me, because I need the preceding lines, and I said the preceding lines, so grep minus b3. Okay, so the obscuring object will be at 12, and the obscured object will be, the sun will be at 13, which looks a little bit weird, because it looks like that's sort of upside down from what's going on here, but... No, that's exactly right. And the obscured object is at 2 hours and 26 minutes, um, which is about 37.5 degrees. Um, yeah, pretty much. And this is uh, Jupiter's at 26 degrees. So, um, I think I put in too many lines there, but anyway. Uh, yeah, I meant to say... I meant to say two and one, one line of, of context. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like we're, we're pretty damn cool on the nine degrees one. Let's see what's going on with the second one, which is apparently also causing us some issues. That one is actually much, much worse. And that one's, um, that w is one where we need to actually figure out what the hell's going on. I think at this point we don't have to do, we don't even have to keep this around as a comment. 
I will go ahead and, and do a quick uh, backup here. Okay. Backup meaning I'm going to push it to GitHub. Okay, all nice and pushed. So now we're going to... Um, I'm going to figure out how to switch between these windows easily. I think I can just use Alt Tab. Nope, can't, 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 can't. Um, okay, so we have this for obscure and obscure. Okay, so that's there. Um, and so it's really these three commands here that uh, that compute and print the rectangular coordinates. Um, Uh, oh, shiny. Um, and because we're uh, redefining obscuring an obscured pause, um, I d I d these, even though this code is redundant, it is correct. It is because we are we are re uh, we are re we're getting new values for these. So in this case, I think I actually do need to do a minus a three because I am looking for the three previous values. But first, let's see. Nope, no problems at all with BC obscurations. And now, the moment of truth. Um, okay, see, what's weird is these two values look similar to each other, but nothing at all like this value. So I, I'm, I'm, should I be concerned? Because, um, I mean, the sun is probably not going to move. Well, from 12 to minus 0 is not that big of a move, actually. Uh, but also the fact that it's occurring, um, I mean, the, in the amount of time between this line and this line, sorry, this line, this line is equivalent to the time between this line and this line, so it looks like something uh, weird has happened. So I think that, let's take a quick look at that before we go any further. Um, beginning plus end over two, but everything else is the same, right? Or have I messed? Okay, yes, I have. Um, yeah, because the um, because the call is actually very different. It is. Um, oh, it's actually not very different. It's almost the same, except here we want J two thousand. Here we want J two thousand. Um, and here, instead of the, f the frames, are always going to be um, J2000 because we want to look at the uh, the hour angle and, and the right ascension and the declination, uh, not in the frame of uh, whatever we were doing it in. Although that should have literally no effect on the angle between the vectors pr because the frame was the same. But um, I'll just put in some words here, just uh, blah 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 blah. I don't know why why this should be any better, but ho if it is, it, you know, we're happy. <sighs> oh, see, now it looks a hell of a lot better. Um, so the only thing I can figure out about is I was using different frames, and I might have been. I bit, might have been using the obscured frame and the obscure ring frame separately, um, which, of course, doesn't work correctly. Um, so this is actually a lot better. Uh, we do have it, so it starts off at 9.7, ends up the closest approach is 3 degrees, and the furthest approach is 9.78. Uh, so now we want to sort of get the, um, and I'm going to start adding a little bit of, uh, adding some labels to these. We want to get the idea of what the angular radius is for each of these objects. And that's just going to be the arc sine of the radius over the center to center distance of the, of the two, which should not be, um, which actually we're getting because we're using, uh, you know, it's going to be the, um, the R basically, or it's the V norm, whichever you, you prefer really. Um, so that's looking pretty good now. Let's see if we can actually just do it for everything. And those numbers are looking a lot better. Three degrees, three degrees, three degrees uh, is the closest approach. Um, not the closest, the mid, the midpoint approach. Um, and we have the uh, the right ascension and the declination of both objects. Um, pretty damn good, I think. And it is actually now getting to be about, um, oh wow, now we're in 50 minutes. So I think I'm going to stop the stream here. Thank you for watching, uh, whether you're watching now or in, um, uh, oh hello, person who's watching who uh, is not saying anything. 
All right, thank you for watching. We're going to kill the stream for today. We're going to come back probably tomorrow or never, or sometime between tomorrow and never. And we're going to continue with this. We're going to look at the angular diameters or radiuses of the two objects that are being viewed uh, instead of just the, uh, the vector separation between them. Uh, although I'm, I'm really glad we got this into this, uh, we, we, we have this now in the same frame, it's looking pretty good. And we even can tell if you're on the observing object what the right ascension and declination will be of, of where this happens. Okay, thank you for watching and uh, bye for now.